Now, as I'm sure a lot of you guys already know, the laceless Adidas Predator 18 Plus always comes with the shoehorn inside the box. And the reason why they include this is to make it easier to actually get them on because they are laceless. The opening is quite small. This definitely can make things easier if you don't like using your hands. However, and I've never talked about this before, there is actually a second use for the shoehorn. And there is in fact a reason why it's called a shoehorn. If you hold it like this and then just blow across the top, What's going on guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com bringing you my review plus plus on feet video of the Adidas Predator 18 Plus in the new Deadly Strike Pack colorway. And as you can see, this is a really, really good looking colorway. I'm a big fan of how they look at least. And we'll go over the details of the colorway in today's video. This one featuring some significant differences that we've never seen on any of the past Predator 18 Plus colors so far. We'll talk tech specs, performance, how they fit and feel on feet, essentially cover everything that you need to know about these if you're interested in getting a pair for yourself. So if you wanna learn more, please stick around and if you are interested in a pair for yourself, I'll leave a little pop-up on screen or you can click the first link down below. That'll take you to the review page on my website where you'll find buy it now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes. Where you'll be able to pick these up below their normal $300 retail price. Included with the boots is this fancy box with the magnetic flap on the front. And then when you open it up, it's kind of like an internal ramp that presents the boots to you. It's almost like a display case. You also get some extra foam insoles to go along with the boost insoles already included inside the shoes. You also get a Predator branded string bag. And like I showed you earlier, the shoehorn. The colorway itself looks really, really good in person. And something that you wouldn't be able to tell in pictures is that the upper as well as the sole plate has this kind of color changing effect to it. And I'm not sure how it's gonna show up on camera, but the upper, at least the parts that are covered in the control skin, has this blue base. So it's kind of like a bright royal blue with like a semi-metallic shine to it. But it also has this color changing effect to purple. And in person, it looks really cool because of this ridge pattern that you have. So you can kind of see the color changing within the design of the shoe itself, especially here on the medial side. It's actually a pretty cool effect. And then of course you do have that wearable finish on the sole plate. That's also metallic blue that kind of changes to purple. I can't really tell on the camera screen here. It kind of just looks like it's blue, but it does have that color changing effect in person. Translucent studs, as you can see. And for the first time ever, we're actually getting a legitimate translucent window for uh, a, basically a reveal of the boost that you have on the underside of the forefoot that on this particular shoe, keep that in mind, the boost is only from the midfoot forward. It doesn't run all the way through like we saw on the A17 Plus Pure Control. Not that it really makes that big of a difference anyways, more on that in just a second. There are also some glow in the dark elements to the upper in the form of the Adidas stripes. That's pretty clear to see. It kind of looks like reflective material, but it is in fact glow in the dark. And then also this little Adidas logo on the back of the heel, as well as the control skin branding also glows in the dark. However, it's very, very small and not nearly as noticeable as the Adidas stripes themselves. The exposed primary material you have across the top of the foot, as well as in the collar, is kind of like a royal blue with a slight purplish shade to it. It's really difficult to say exactly what color this is, but you'll notice, and you'll see this much better when they're on feet, when the material stretches out, the mid layer of the prime knit is actually that teal accent that you can very clearly see on the inside of the collar itself. Same thing here on the collar, when that stretches, it reveals some of that teal color, which is quite cool. You see that as basically the main color of the X17 Plus Pure Speed as part of this Deadly Strike Pack. Also the insole, which you'll get a better look at in just a second, is that same teal color as well. But overall, really, really good looking colorway. I actually like the fact that they didn't go with an accent right here around the heel. It's all just one solid blue color. I think that actually looks a little bit better versus the accent. It makes it almost look kind of like a sprint frame. But let me know your thoughts on the overall colorway here. Do you love how these look? Do you hate how they look? Why or why not? Let me know down below in the comments. Now for me, the appeal of the high-end Predators from a performance standpoint is the Prime Knit Upper. This is the softest, most sock-like, most natural knitted upper we've ever seen from the Adidas brand by a long shot. And of course, this is the 18 plus model, which does not mean that you have to be 18 years or older to use them, but in fact, that they don't have any laces. And the laceless thing is something that some people love, some people dislike. I can't say that I'm a huge fan of it. I think if you're looking for the best possible performance out of a high-end Predator that's available, 
available right now, you're better off saving the extra $75 and going for the Predator 18.1, which is more or less the exact same shoe, minus the boost, which is not a big deal. And of course, with the addition of a lacing system, which I think makes all the difference in regards to lockdown responsiveness. And just having that adjustability is something that to me is very important in terms of getting the best possible fit out of any soccer cleat, not just the Predator. However, if you're into the whole laceless thing, it does actually work decently well on this particular shoe. It's elasticated prime knit across the top of the foot. That's essentially what's holding your foot in place. However, like most laceless systems that I've tried, it's stretchy. So it has to be stretchy in order to get your foot in and out of the shoe, but upon more intense movements, whether that's a hard cut or even a plant for a strike, expect that material to stretch, which means your foot is kind of in a free float inside of the shoe. Some people don't mind that. For myself, it really bothers me. So again, it's really a personal preference thing as to whether or not you should go for the laced or the laceless variation of the Predator, or any Adidas boot for that matter. Like I mentioned, I'm a big fan of the Prime Knit Upper. It's soft, it's flexible. You can see the very surface has this interesting ridge texturing that I think looks quite cool, but honestly isn't super noticeable on the ball. Not really much in the way of extra grip, which was kind of a signature of the Predator series before they got rid of it and now have since brought it back. So this, to a certain extent, really doesn't relate too much to the older Predators from a performance or feel standpoint. But in terms of what it is, it is actually a very, very nice material that is thin, but has that padded sensation to it. So I wouldn't necessarily categorize this as a barefoot feel in any way at all. You're gonna find that on the laceless variation, technically the midfoot is made out of a forged knit material rather than prime knit like you'd find on the Predator 18.1. Basically, it's a little bit thicker and slightly more reinforced, which it needs to be because it is a laceless boot. There aren't any laces, so they have to add some kind of reinforcement. But in terms of feel and general performance, it doesn't really make for that big of a difference in regards to touch on the ball, at least. Um, as far as the collar is concerned, honestly, it looks very cool, but it feels like a low cut shoe. This is not something that really takes any getting used to. And as far as any discomfort in the heel is concerned, that's all going to be attributed to how well the laceless boot actually locks your foot in place. Depending on the shape of your foot, it might fit you really well. It might not fit you so well. It's something that you really kind of have to try on and then make a decision from there. Because if they don't fit you well because it is laceless, you can't adjust anything. So you can't make them tighter. You can't make them looser. It's just not going to work right for everybody. Internally, you're going to find that it does have a synthetic suede liner with a decent amount of padding actually quite comfortable again given that you have the proper fit and then we get to the internals which is something that you do pay extra for and get exclusively on the predator 18 plus that is the boost insole which you can see has a synthetic suede liner on top and is made from a very thin layer a single layer of their boost material and it's so thin and i guess you can see this normally with boost when you compress it you can actually kind of see the compressor compression and the bounce back this is so thin that it's basically just the same general feel as a regular foam even though it's technically the very premium boost now keep in mind there is a second layer of that boost material at the base of the outsole mainly in the forefoot area so technically in the forefoot you have two layers of this boost but even then it's still not thick enough to really provide that boost sensation that you would get from something like an Adidas Ultra Boost running shoe. So if you're buying this shoe with the expectation that the boost aspect is gonna offer some kind of significant underfoot cushioning, unfortunately, that's not really the case. As far as the sole plate and stud pattern is concerned, this is their control frame, which is probably the most solid offering from all the sole plates on top end models from Adidas right now, but at the same time, doesn't really feel too far off. And the stud pattern, it's FGAG. It's the same layout, again, that you're gonna find across the entire brand. Nothing spectacular as far as performance is concerned, but it definitely feels stable and it does get the job done. Plus, it's really nice that you can wear these on firm natural grass and artificial grass without having to worry about safety or performance issues. And then of course, in regards to weight, that's something that a lot of people don't really consider with this Predator line. They're actually heavier than the average high-end shoe, not to the point where I'd say that they're heavy, but they're not as light as you might expect them to be. In a size nine US, they weigh in at about 8.3, 8.4 ounces, which again, is not heavy by any means, but if we're comparing it to other top end boots from Adidas and top end boots from other brands in general, they're gonna be about a full ounce lighter at around seven to, to, to even the, the high six ounce range is what you're gonna find most high end boots fall into right now. So these won't feel heavy on your feet, but if you're looking for that super lightweight sensation, you're definitely not gonna get it from this particular model. So since these are laceless and you can't really loosen the upper, it can be a little bit tricky to put on, but once you get used to it, it's honestly not that big of a deal. They do include that shoehorn. I personally never use it though, just because I don't think it's really necessary. I like to kind of get my foot in like this sideways and then just use both hands 
to kind of open up the collar and stretch out the central portion of the upper. If we get my foot in, kind of get it halfway through, make sure I'm supporting the back so I'm not crushing the structure here. And then again, just kind of slide my foot all the way in really, really slowly until it's pretty much in the shoe. And that's about it. From there, adjust the collar, adjust the front a little bit. And that's all you can really do. You can't make them tighter, you can't make them looser. Once they're on, that's how they fit. On feet, the Predator 18 Plus is pretty comfortable out of the box. Like I said, the Primate Upper is definitely the highlight of this shoe in general. Really soft, very, very sock-like. And because it is laceless, it doesn't have a particularly tight fit across the top of the foot, which I think for people that really like the whole laceless thing, that's the main reason why they like it. They don't like the sensation of tightness, but if you really like that super tight locked-in feel, going with the laceless boot probably isn't the best option for you. However, again, if you don't mind a slightly looser, I guess less secure feeling on your feet, then you're probably really gonna like the feel of not just these, but pretty much any laceless boots at all. I find that my heel does kind of want to slip out, again, just because there's nothing pushing my foot into the base of the sole. But in regards to just making sure that your feet stay inside of the shoes, you're unlikely to have any issues with these unless they just don't fit your feet properly at all. That does make sizing particularly important. This is probably not one of those shoes or any laceless boot for that matter that you want to buy with a lot of extra space just because your feet are not going to be secure inside of the shoes at all. So breaking time is more so just getting used to the shoes rather than actually breaking anything in because the upper is so soft. Like I mentioned, the, the boost underneath your feet doesn't really feel like anything special at all. It kind of just feels like a regular insole. And as far as the width is concerned, they've got a decent amount of width to them. I wouldn't say that they are spectacularly narrow or wide, but I definitely think that they will fit most people. And as far as the sizing is concerned, I'm wearing my usual size 9 US here and the fit and the length is pretty much perfect. So if you are looking to order a pair for yourself, I would strongly recommend going true to size in order to achieve the best possible fit. Anyways, guys, that is it for my review of the Deadly Strike Predator 18 Plus. Again, if you're interested in a pair for yourself, you can click the first link down below. That'll take you to the review page on my website where you'll find buy it now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes. Where you'll be able to pick these up below their normal $300 retail price. If you enjoyed the video, found it helpful and informative, be sure to support it with a like. If you have any questions, as always, leave them down below in the comments and I'll do my best to get an answer to you as soon as I possibly can. Subscribe if you haven't already. For daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear, you can find all my social media information linked down below in the description as well. Other than that, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. As always, thanks for watching.